Let's get some price picks in today, guys. Last night, I dropped four slips, and we got real close. On this Cleveland stack versus Chicago White Sox, we were just missing Jimenez here on his hits, runs, RBIs. Cleveland did well last night. They got hits, runs, RBIs, but just Jimenez wasn't one of those players. You can see Bo Naylor and Manzardo did clear the bases, but Jimenez didn't do much. Betty did go under his two and a half pitcher strikeouts. So close to the 10x on this one. This one here was completely chalked. Logan got absolutely demolished last night. I think Minnesota had like six runs within the first three innings. So yeah, not a good look there on his over pitcher strikeouts. Jalen Brown did cash that on the 25 and a half points quite easily. Then the third slip here, you guys should have refunded if you did play because there was a DNP. As I said in last night's video, you do not want to be playing three powers. And when you have this DNP, it reverts downwards and you're losing a whole ton of value. As for the picks that I actually played, you can see kind of the opposite happened. Colorado was doing well opposing pitcher was not doing well so he went under his pitcher strikeouts and the other team went over their bases and runs so you can see how correlated it is here since they all went red had we gone the opposite direction it's all green so that's kind of how correlation works and how i'm thinking when i'm building these slips last one here on esports was close Klaus ended up not doing much so he did not cash but another three and one there we're going up to board for today with another two four powers and my four powers are not going to contain nba picks at all so i'm just going to go over to nba and tell you my leans that i'm thinking and then, then i'm going to then I'm going to go to MLB and actually make two full four powers. Just to start with NBA with some picks that I'm liking. First of all, who I'm not liking is Tyrese Halliburton here on his 19 and a half points. I think it is too high. It was like 15 and a half, I want to say, last game. And now he is bumped all the way to 19 and a half just because he got this 34 point game and got boosted a ton. Yes, he's been playing sort of with an injury, but it has not been affecting his minutes. He's been averaging like 36 minutes a game. So it's like he's expected to get more minutes tonight or anything. He will still get around that 36 minute mark. And one standout game versus Knicks is not enough to convince me to take his over here. So I would be going with his under. I do have his under in a different slip. For an Indiana over, I would go with Pascal Siakam on his over. He has not hit this in the past five games. He has not hit this versus the Knicks. And he didn't even get close last game. But Tyrese Halliburton was kind of carrying last game. I would grab him on the over 20 and a half points. We could go and check the juice on Siakam here on the sports books. And you're going to see he does have juice towards over all the way up at minus 134. So I think Siakam is a good lean towards the over. Now for the actual stacks that I would go with. I would go with Miles Turner on his over 16 and a half points. And then Tyrese Halliburton on his over nine and a half assists. The slight lean on the over juice for Miles Turner. And Tyrese Halliburton's kind of flat on minus 115, minus 115. But as I always say, a large majority of Miles Turner's points will be assisted if Tyrese Halliburton's having a good assisting game. It's more likely that these guys go over together rather than that they don't. So if you guys are liking Miles Turner over 16 and a half points or Tyrese Halliburton over nine and a half assists, make sure you're taking both of the players instead of just one. If you're already leaning on one of these players, that is the first stack I'm liking. The second stack I'm liking is actually the reverse concept. So Anthony Edwards on his under five and a half assist and we're going to go to Rudy Gobert on his under 12 and a half points again all these stacks I'm not going to be going with a full entry but I have these similar things in a couple of my other entries that I already sent to the discord so Anthony Edwards under five and a half assists Rudy Gobert under 12 and a half points exact same concept as Halle Burton into Miles Turner except we're going with the unders instead if you go over to Pinnacle you'll see some very nice juice towards the under on Rudy Gobert points here all the way up at minus 133 and then Edwards has slight juice towards the under at five and a half assists to minus 119. So good juice on both these guys' unders. And of course, Rudy Gobert gets a lot of assisted points. So a good stack there. The last one I went with is actually a triple stack. So Jokic on his over eight and a half assists. And then I threw an MPJ on his over 16 and a half points. And then another player who kind of only scores assisted points, KCP on his over seven and a half points. So this makes sense if Jokic's getting a lot of assists. It's likely that these two players who are very assist reliant are going to be getting their over on their points. It also means that Jokic is probably scoring less if he's assisting more. And we all know that Jamal Murray hasn't been doing well in this series. So MPJ and KCP are going to have to take over. And I'm willing... And when I'm looking for players like this, I always go over to this NBA player stat scoring and you could kind of check how many points are coming from assists for each of these players. See, 85% of MPJ's field goals made are going to be assisted. That is a very high amount. Just for comparison, Shea has 24% of his field goals made assisted. He doesn't really need people to be giving him the ball to create points like MPJ does because he scores a lot of threes, for example. And for KCP, exact same concept. 83.7% of his field goals made are assisted. So you understand how that's a good stack with Jokic on his over assists because these guys are going to be filling their bars up together. When you're watching this game live, you're going to see a bunch of green going up all together. So those are all the NBA plays I went for in my personal slips. I'm going to be going over to the MLB to create two full stacks for you guys here. First stack, I'm going over to Cleveland. I'm grabbing Austin Hedges on his over half a hits runs RBI. And I'm also going to take Tyler Freeman on his over one and a half hits runs RBIs. As always, I'm not going to explain this too much. I've explained it in every single video, but I will show you the lineup and show you where these guys are sitting next to each other here. If you go and check Hedges, he's expected to bat ninth. Freeman expected to bat first. So they won't be batting together in the first inning, but eventually throughout the game, they will probably be batting near each other. And it's also the fact that if Cleveland is doing well, they're going to get more at-bats, allowing both Hedges and Freeman to get their hits, runs, or RBIs. Also, you know, I'll always talk about the juice Austin Hedges towards the over at minus 125, as we see here on DraftKings. And then the second pick, Tyler Freeman, also has juice towards the over 
at minus 125. So we have that correlation effect and we have that juice. Now we're going to go over to San Diego and actually fade them. We're going to be grabbing the under on Kim's total basis. So half a total base. And then we're going to be pairing this up with Fernando on his under one and a half total basis. In the lineup, we see Kim batting ninth and then Fernando batting second. So similar concept to the first stack that I went with. This time we're going with the unders instead. Why? Because of the juice. We look at Fernando. He has juice towards the under at minus 130. And then the second pick, I'll show you on Buffy's side, is a bit easier. Kim, total bases. You're going to see that he does have juice towards the under at minus 120. Not as much juice as Fernando, but still decent enough. And this is going to be the first slip. The second slip is much better because we're going with a full MLB stack. The first pick we're going with is Clark on his under three and a half pitcher strikeouts. It's Yankees versus Tampa. So you could already see where this is going. I'm going to be taking overs on all the Tampa players. So the first player I'm going with is Yandy Diaz on his over one and a half hits runs RBIs. Let's check the juice on Yandy right away. He has heavy juice towards that over at minus 140. You love to see it. Now we're going to be pairing this up with two more players. Not under hits runs RBIs because I didn't believe I was able to find any good ones. But we have Caballero on his over half a total base. And then we have Ben on his over half a total base. So full stack here. Total bases plus hits runs RBIs. We're looking for Tampa's offense to do very well. In the lineup here, you have Caballero batting 7th. You got Ben batting 8th. And then Yanni Diaz batting 1st, of course. Maybe he runs both of them by by the 3rd inning. Hopefully they both get on base. The more at-bats this team's going to get, the more likely everyone goes over this prop. This is going to be the second slip. Good luck, everyone.